Bit by bit, Samsung's foldables have become practical, powerful, and elegant devices that you might reasonably choose over a flagship that doesn't bend in the middle. The new Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 6 is no exception, and it's a testament to how far Samsung has come since introducing its first foldable Galaxy in 2019. The Galaxy Z Fold 6 bears almost no resemblance to the original Fold, and the changes are all for the good in the areas that matter. Samsung unveiled the Galaxy Z Fold 6 at Samsung Galaxy Unpacked in Paris on July 10 alongside the new but perhaps less ordered Galaxy Z Flip 6 and a host of other new Galaxy hardware including watches, earbuds, and the eagerly anticipated Galaxy Ring. The Galaxy Z Fold 6 starts at $1899. US dollar, which is $100 more than the previous model. That model comes with 256GB of storage and an ample 12GB of RAM. I'll have more on say on the price hike later. It's on pre-order as of today, July 10, and will ship on July 27. There are multiple color options, including pink and a few online exclusives, including white and crafted black, though so I think the navy blue may be my favorite. While Samsung didn't completely throw out the previous Fold aesthetic, its sustainability different in the Galaxy Z Fold 6. The handset is thinner and lighter than the previous model. In fact, it's so light at 239 grams that it's only 7 grams heavier than the single-screen Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. That itself is quite a fit. Granted, there may be some material differences like armor aluminum on the Galaxy Z Fold 6 versus S24 Ultra's titanium body, and the Galaxy Z Fold 6 feels noticeably lighter than the Z Fold 5 that I brought with me to Paris for the sake of comparison. The chrome aging is gone and I do not miss it at all even though the button placement is unchanged and the fingerprint reader is the same, all the buttons look and feel better. Unfolded, the Fold 6 is thinner than the Fold 5 and it's also slightly shorter and slightly wider than the last foldable flagship in a quick comparison with the Google Pixel Fold, though the Fold 6 maintains the height advantage. The newly squared corners and visibly thinner bezels give the tablet-sized screen a more expansive and cleaner feel. The main screen crease is still visible but less so than it was on the Z Fold 5. It's impressive how year over year Samsung moves the art of this technology a little closer to perfect. The crease free fold is coming someday. Samsung told me it's strengthened the hinge by adding more steel to the dual rail system. That system, by the way, is more or less sealed, which means it doesn't need tiny brushes inside the hinge to push out debris. Still, while the phone is rated to serve 30 minutes in a meter of water, its ability to withstand a dust storm might be a bit less certain, which is why it has an IP8X rating and not IP68. Both the main and the cover screens look bigger and better than ever. The cover screen benefits from a shrinking bezel that adds a tiny bit of screen real estate without making the phone much wider. The inside display, which is still AMOLED, does get some important updates. It's now at 2600 nits, much brighter than the one on the Z Fold 5, and includes adaptive refresh rate up to 120Hz. There are also more software controls, including vibrancy. However, the most notable folding screen update may be one you can't see. Samsung executive told me they added a new layer made of neodymium to the folding screen panel. The material has Newtonian qualities, which means it can act like cornstarch and water, which when mixed are soft if you are pressing gently, but harden when you hit it harder. It's designed to be pliable, but if you were to hit the 46 screen with a hard object, the layer would automatically meet it with stiff resistance. Naturally, we won't know the effectiveness of all this until I test the foldable fully.
Samsung redesigned the camera housing to make it look, I believe, a bit more pro and in line with the phone's more elegant overall appearance. However, it's in this area where I worry Samsung didn't go far enough. It has retained last year's 50 megapixel main wide and 10 megapixel 3x optical zoom cameras and only upgraded the 12 megapixel ultra wide, adding a sensor that's better equipped to handle low light situations. Any other photographic improvements are due to upgrades in Samsung's Pro Vision software. In my limited hands-on time, I could see that the cameras work as well as what I experienced using the Galaxy Z Fold 5. The 3x zoom is useful and you can go all the way up to 30x space zoom, though I wouldn't recommend it mainly because space zoom relies a little too much AI image enhancement for my taste. What I was hoping for here was the adoption of the flagship class S24 Ultra cameras. The handsets, 200 megapixel main camera and better 5x zoom are the least we should expect from a smartphone costing nearly 2000 US dollar. That said, there is nothing wrong with this camera array and it should please most casual photographers. The cover screens features a cutout 10 megapixel selfie camera that I tried and I liked and there are also a 4 megapixel main display camera usually hidden by pixels that you will mainly use for video calls. I shot some test images both with the Z Fold 6 unfolded in which orientation the main screen becomes a giant viewfinder and with the handset closed using the smaller cover screen as my viewfinder. The nice thing about using the large screen is that you can have a view that shows both the live camera feed and a film strip of your most recent shots next to it. The Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 6 seems better than its predecessor the Z Fold 5 in almost every way should join our list of best foldable phones. Design-wise, I think this is a big leap forward. This now feels like a normal phone that just happens to split open to reveal a big main screen wonder and it's a lovely screen even with that visible crease. All the built-in AI isn't just fun, it has the potential to be genuinely useful for many people, assuming they can discover it. The cameras are good too, I would love a bigger zoom and more megapixels on the main camera. My main criticism comes down to price. The foldable market remains tiny and I think consumers will more quickly gravitate towards affordable foldables than they will full featured ones. Asking for yet another 100 bucks, even for a better device, seems like a mistake and as I noted recently, probably won't help Samsung grow the tiny foldable market. Of course, there is a good chance that you will pay less than 1899 US dollar for the Z Fold 6. I have yet to see a Galaxy phone launch that doesn't include significant deals and discounts.